Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm here today with Game 3. I know you've been waiting for it. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Game 3 between the 1954 Chicago Cubs, who will be the visitor in this game, and the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> And the Reds will be home. They were the better team, so they were home games one and three. Assuming they didn't lose one of the first two games, but they actually did do that. So the series is tied 1-1, and we are in game three. Pitching for the Reds today, and out on the mound taking his last warm-ups, is um, Jose Rijo. And they were holding him back in case they needed this game three. And then uh, pitching for the Cubs will be Warren Hacker. And they were just hoping they weren't ever going to have to see Warren Hacker. But they do. So, um, we are just about to get started here. Rio is done with his warm-ups. So, Ernie Banks steps in to face Jose Rijo. And that's a 5-4, which is a home run 1-3 or a double. So right off the bat, we got something big going down, and that's a double. So, uh, Ernie Banks hits a double, hit off a of Rio. And I got to be careful in this game that I don't make too many mistakes, because, you know, if I do, I tend to hear it from Butch Haver. So, who is a... Subscriber to the channel who watches these games pretty much every time I put one up and when I make a mistake I hear about it. So anyway, Frank Buchholz is up. No outs. Man at second and that's a 5-9 which is a strikeout. So, or bumholes. Sorry Butch, bumholes. So anyway, he strikes out. Rio strikes out bumholes. And we got Hank Sauer up and Hank Sauer is in the wrong column but he does walk there. So there's going to be two Cubs aboard with um, with only one out. And Ralph Kiner is up. Of course, you, if you lived in upstate New York, like I did when I was growing up, you'll remember Ralph Kiner is one of the Mets announcers on WOR, I think. And he gets a 2-7, which is a fly ball B right between two things. So a fly ball to left field. So, Kiner is out. And now there's two down with two Cubs aboard and Gene Baker up. And he gets a 6-4, which is a ground ball to the shortstop. That's Barry Larkin. He's a 1. And that's a 3. That's going to be an out. So, the side is retired. And uh, let's make sure we get Baker marked down as his bat. And that brings up the Reds lineup. In the bottom of the first, and they will lead off against Warren Hacker with Mariano Duncan. And he gets a 6 7, which is a ground ball to the second baseman. That's Gene Baker. He's a second base three. That is a 12, probably an out, would be my guess, and it is. So there's one down. Duncan is retired. That brings up Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher gets a 5 6. Which is a line out to the shortstop, two away. And that brings up Hal Morris. Big Hal in his column gets a double one to 19. And he does get a double, barely. But we're, you know, we're not going to be picky about that. So he's got a double and a, and a, uh, a double and a triple in this series. Hacker's given up his first hit of the game and Herm Winningham is up he gets a 4-5 which is a fly ball center field C and he is out of course Herm Winningham is in because as you may remember Eric Davis was injured in game two and he was injured 
for easily enough games to miss this series and maybe even the next one. So no runs come across for Cincinnati. We go to the top of the second and that brings up um, Bob Talbot who gets a 1-3 which is a ground ball to the shortstop and so he's out. And he's three for ten in the series. Walker Cooper is up. He gets a two. What is that? Two seven. That's a fly ball to left field. So Walker Cooper, the catcher, is out. And that brings up Defondi, and Defondi strikes out. And that's a second strikeout for Rio. The Cubs go one two three. We go to the bottom of the second. Scoreless still, Chris Sabo is up, 6-9, is a home run. That's just a plain home run by Chris Sabo. So Hacker gives up his second hit, first homer, first earned run, and it's 1-0. Barry Larkin's up, he gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball to the second baseman. Second baseman is Gene Baker. He's a three. That's a ten. And that is a one base error. Gene Baker making an error. So Larkin is aboard with an error. Give that error to Baker. And they've still got uh, nobody out and Paul O'Neill up now. And he gets a five seven which is a triple one or it'll be a fly ball to right. And it ends up being a fly ball to right, so there's one away. O'Neill making the first out of the inning. That brings up Todd Benzinger. Benzinger gets a 4-10, which is a fly ball to center field. That's two away. And that brings up Joe Oliver. And he gets a 1-4, which is a line out to second base. And that is that. But... Cincinnati does get a run on a home run by Chris Sabo, the third baseman. And now Randy Jackson is up for Chicago in the top of the third, and he is going to fly out to center. Ernie Banks is up, and he gets a 5-6, which is a double 1-10, to 10, or... Yeah, he gets the other half of that, which is a fly ball to right. So Banks is out. Banks only two for ten in the series, but that's with a home run and a double. So those two hits were pretty good. And Frank Bumholz is up, and he gets a 4-6. And 4-6 is a walk. So Bumholz gets a board. I think Bumholz was on last time, if I don't miss my guess. In fact, he may have walked last time as well. Uh, Hank Sauer's up, and he gets a 1-8 ground ball into a double, not really a double play because there was already two outs, but he did ground out to the shortstop, and that is the end of the inning. Bottom of the second, and really, Sauer has not really been that great for them. They've, he's only two for nine, and he doesn't have a home run, even though he had a ton of home runs that year. All right, Mariano Duncan up, bottom of the third. Three eight is a ground ball to the third baseman. He's out. Brings up Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher gets a one five, which is a single one to nine. And that's going to be, instead, it's going to be an out, a line out to second, so that's two away. And up steps Hal Morris, who had a hit last time or got on somehow. And he's got a home run 1-16 to this time. And he does. There's another solo shot for the Reds. As Hal Morris goes deep. And he's been great this series. 5 for 9 with a double, a homer, and a triple. And Hacker gives up his third hit, second homer, second run. And that brings up Herm Winningham, who gets a 6-6, six, six, which is a strikeout. So, Herm Winningham is gone, but again, the Reds strike for another run on another 
solo shot. And they are leading 2 0 with Ralph Kiner coming to the plate for that for the uh, Cubs. And he gets a fly ball right field plus injury. They cannot afford this. And they really can't. So Kiner is gone. And he, uh, he he's, he'll be out for at least six games. Um, but that is, yeah, that's the breaks. And Kiner was the DH. So they can grab really pretty much anybody. And uh, we will see who that's going to be. Um, hmm. Really don't have a lot of good hitters, do they? It's going to be Steve Bilko. Steve Bilko will come in and uh, be the replacement DH. And uh, he is a stealing E. And I believe that um, that's, I think that's two outs. And that brings up Gene Baker with two down. And he gets a 311, which is a ground ball to the shortstop, and he is out. So the Cubs get no runs. In the fourth, we go to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth, the Cubs are missing one of their great, their best players, and they weren't very good to begin with, even with all those the good players that they had. Chris Sabo up, who has a home run, and he has a double one to five there, and it's and going to end up being a single. So Chris Sabo with a hit. Fourth hit allowed by Gene Hacker, or Warren Hacker. And we got a 6-5, which is a fly ball to center for Barry Larkin. So Larkin flies out to the center fielder. I've been surprised at the fact that the Reds really have not scored a ton of runs in this series. They scored five runs in game one, which was pretty good. Then they only scored uh, one last game. And so far, they've only got two. O'Neill is up. He gets a 210, which is a double. Just a plain, everyday, run it down the line double. And that'll put runners at second and third with one away, I believe. Yeah. And we're not going to send uh, the runner. Fifth hit allowed by Warren Hacker, and Todd Benzinger is up. He gets a 1-8, which is a single and knocks in a run. They're not going to send the uh, runner. I mean, I think they've got the feeling here now that they're kind of in control and uh, don't really have to worry about this. Because that's the third run that's come in for them. And Joe Oliver is up, and he gets a 1-8, which is a ground ball into a double play. Ground ball to short. The Cubs were at normal depth, so it is to it is the end of the inning um, for Joe Oliver. But they came up with another run, so now they're ahead three nothing after four. So they are starting to have a good scoring ratio to the innings played. And Bob Talbot of the Cubs steps in. He gets a one eight, which is a single. So Talbot is aboard. That's only the second hit given up by Rio, by the way. Warren um, Walker Cooper gets a 1-7, which is a double 1-11, to 11, but now Rio is starting to get hit up a little bit, and he does get a double. So runners are at second and third for the Cubs. Third hit allowed by Rio. Runners at second and third. D. Fondy up, and he gets a 2-8, which is a home run 1-3 to three or a double. And that's going to be a double, though, and it knocks in two runs. So, Fondy, with his first hit of the series, by the way, knocks in two critical runs. And now, all of a sudden, Rio, who was cruising, is only winning by a run. 
and a man 180 feet away with no outs and Randy Jackson up and he gets a 6-5 which is a ground ball to the shortstop and that's going to be Larkin who's a 1 and that's an out so one away for Randy Jackson that brings up Ernie Banks let's play two he gets a ground ball to the third baseman two away and that brings up Frank Bumholes, and he gets a 1-6, which is a single double asterisk, and ties the game. Crazy. Bumholes coming through for the Cubs. This is crazy. It's a whole new ball game now. All of a sudden, Rio, who looked like he was cruising, Hank Sauer is up. He gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is Duncan, and he's a 3. That's an 18. 18 and 3 is a roll again. And that's a 1. That's going to be serious stuff right there. It's a single 2. So runners are at the corners. As Sauer gets a base hit. Sixth hit allowed by Rio. And Bilko is up. And he gets a 6-5. Which is a ground ball short again. That's Larkin. And that's an error by Larkin, I believe. It's an 11. It is an error by Larkin. And now the... Uh... Oh, yeah. And that was uh, that was the replacement for Ralph Kiner. He gets on by an error by um, Barry Larkin, who uncharacteristically has made his second error of this series. And now the Cubs have pulled ahead and Gene Baker is up and he gets a 412 which is a fly ball center field and finally the nightmare ends for Rio but not before the Cubs take a 4-3 lead and we go to the bottom of the fifth and now not sending those runners for the Reds last inning might come back and haunt them Duncan is up 3-8, and that's a ground ball third base. He's out. They got a little complacent, figured they had it in the bag, and maybe that's not the case. 4-8 for Billy Hatcher is a pop out to third. Two away. And that brings up Hal Morris, and Hal Morris gets a 6-3, which is a ground ball to the pitcher. And he is a defensive two. And that's a 19. That's going to be a roll again. And that is a seven. That's going to be an out. So Hal Morris is out. And the Reds get nothing there. We go to the top of the sixth. The surprising Cubs team that just came to life. Let's see if they can add on to it. With Bob Talbot up. And he gets a 6-7. Which is a ground... or. Um, 6-7 is ground ball second base X. He's the 3. That's a 15. That might be something. It's not, though. One away, so Talbot's out. That brings up Walker Cooper. Walker Cooper gets a 3-9, which is a walk. So Walker Cooper taking a walk. And Rio, with his third walk issue, one out, Fondy up, 311, ground ball, second base, double play. So the Cubs are out of the inning. They don't get any runs. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. And Herm Winningham is up. He gets a 512. 5-12 is a ground ball to the pitcher. He's out. Chris Sabo is up. He gets a 3-5, which is a fly ball center field. And he's out. And Barry Larkin gets a 3-4. And he gets a triple 1-11, to trying to atone for his error this game. And it is a triple. So he's only 90 feet away now. Hall of Famer, Barry Larkin. 
ripping a triple off hacker that's only the seventh hit hackers allowed and that brings up Paul O'Neill who gets a 4-9 and that's a double that knocks in the tying run so Paul O'Neill getting his third double of the series as a matter of fact second RBI Hacker with the fourth run allowed and Benzinger up and he gets a 3-5 which is a strikeout only the first strikeout though for Hacker but anyway the Reds get a run and so now we're looking at a four all ball game going to the top of the seventh so it's getting late but both teams are tied Randy Jackson up he gets a 4-5 which is a fly ball to center he's out That brings up Ernie Banks. Let's play two. He gets a ground ball shortstop and he's out. You were hoping, you know, if you're sitting there at home you and you root for the underdog, you were hoping Hacker could hold him, but he couldn't. Bumholz gets a 6-9 and that's a home run. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, wrong pitcher. I'm looking at the wrong pitcher. That's a ground ball. So Bumholz is out. And so we go to the top of the seventh. Or no, we go to the bottom of the seventh, and we're still in a four-all ball game. And Joe Oliver up. He gets a 6-7. That's a ground ball to the second baseman. That's Baker. He's a three. That's a 13. And that's a that's an out. So one away. Joe Oliver out. Mariano Duncan gets a 1-9. That's a strikeout. And that's a second strikeout for Hacker. Hatcher up, 6-3, ground ball to the pitcher. He is defensively a 2. That's a 10, that's going to be a, probably an error. 10-2, one base area. So Hatcher on by an error by Hacker. And that brings up Hal Morris, and he gets a 5-7, which is a triple one, or a fly ball to right. And that is a fly ball to the right fielder for Hal Morris. No runs come across for the Reds in the seventh. We go to the top of the eighth. Up step Sauer, 6-9. And that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Sauer is out. Steve Vilko, 6-12. That's a fly ball to right. That's an out. And Gene Baker gets a 1-8, which is a line out to the shortstop. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still tied at four apiece between these two teams with Herm Winningham up at the plate for the Reds and he gets a walk. Chris Sabo is up. He gets a 1-8 which is a pop out to short. One away. Barry Larkin's up. He gets a 4-11. 4-11 is a fly ball to the right fielder. The right fielder for the Cubs is a 4, and that's Hank Sauer. So that isn't a good sign. 13. 13 and 4 is a single 2. So the Reds have runners at the corners. Larkin with the hit. The Cubs are going to stay back, though. They're going to play for the double play, kind of uh, taking their chances. Paul O'Neill is up. 4-7 is a double one or a fly ball B. And that is going to be a fly ball B. So Paul O'Neill does knock in the go-ahead run. And that is an earned run. 
And Ben Zinger up. He gets a 610. That's a catcher card. The catcher is a 4. And that's a, that is a 6. 6 and 4 is an out on dribbler. So Ben Zinger's out. But the Reds, guess what? The Reds went ahead 5-4. Now we're in the top of the ninth. And the um, Reds are going to make a pitching change. Rio is going to come out after a. And they are going to put in Nasty Boy, Rob Dibble. They are not leaving anything to a chance here. As much as they don't have to. Rob Dibble comes in, and he will face the lineup of Bob Talbot, Walker, Cooper, and D. Fondy. Not really the best, but that's what the Cubs are looking at. Talbot up, he gets a 4-10, and that is a strikeout, one away. So Talbot with a strikeout, Dibble with his first K on his first batter, Walker Cooper up, he gets a 4-7, that's a strikeout. Almost seems unfair, but, you know, that's life. And D. Fondi is up, and he gets a 5-3. And that is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. And he is considered to be a 2. And that is a 19. That's a roll again. That's a 12. I don't know if that's going to be something, is it? It is a one base error for Rob Dibble. The Cubs are still alive. They're still clinging to life. Dibble allows the, makes the air. Randy Jackson's up. 6-8, and that's a strikeout, and that will be the end of the game. Dibble struck out two of three outs to get the last three outs of the game and the save. And the um, Cincinnati Reds hung on barely. They went to a game three, and they won game three, 5-4. And that is how it is. The 1990 Reds will advance to the winner's circle, or the winner's bracket for the next round. And the 1954 Cubs will go home. That's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.